Okay, so check this out. This is drawmyui.com. It is a whiteboard component that's been modified so that it works with GPT-4 Vision API. So it will take your drawings and sketches and turn them into Tailwind components by the click of a button. This is really cool. We, sit in, we can see in this demo that it's very simple. It's literally you draw on a canvas and you click a button and off you go. And so we're going to try it out now. So this was written by Sawyer Hood originally last week within five minutes of the announcements coming out. And the TL Draw guys who make the React component, they basically added it as a part of their subdomain. So you can get it on makereal.tldraw.com or you can go to drawmyui.com. And uh, basically you get this open AI API key box at the bottom in which you put an API key that you've got from platform.openai.com. And as you can see here, it says risky, but cool. Um, so I would definitely make a new key for that and uh, make sure that it's one that you can destroy at a moment's notice. I'm gonna go ahead and start drawing in here. Um, let's do a sign me up to my newsletter. And we're gonna make that just a standard um, let's make that a subscribe button actually. And this is a fairly intuitive uh, kind of interface. You're gonna understand what's going on this and you literally just draw everything with boxes and ask it to make it as a component. So very rough sketch there. Let's see if it actually, gen in fact, actually what we gotta do here is be careful about things and select the whole thing. Click make real. And see if it actually calls out to open AI and gives us what we want. Behind the scenes, what this is doing is base64 encoding. And there you go, we can see we've got something that looks pretty much what I've just asked for, which is incredible, really, the fact that we can do this and get it back so quickly. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. And I've got a Visual Studio code open here. I'm just gonna literally dump that within there. Okay, so you can see I've copied everything in there. I'm just going to run python minus m hp.server, which will basically serve out the contents of my directory. And we can see it in the browser then. And so we can interact with it within the browser, hopefully. So there we go. Immediately got a email box. If I subscribe, thank you for subscribing. It's even got some JavaScript in there that's actually a bit managing that behavior. Absolutely crazy that we're able to do that. Um, the cost of these things, I've only done it on a few things so far, but each I, I got it spent about three cents when I was doing this before on a couple of things. So it is again fairly negligible. Let's try something else here. I'm going to open this up to be full screen. Um, let's try a login drop down because that's something that we're always trying to do. I was kind of wondering with this, like whether whether we could use this for components in earnest sort of thing. So whether a back end developer such as myself, who's not particularly skilled at front end, say, is going to be able to do more as a result of this. And what I also find really impressive is that this sort of does away with what we've seen already with the likes of Vercel with their v0.dev. If you haven't encountered that, that basically allows you to um, uh, create versions in a similar sort of fashion, but you don't actually go ahead and draw it as text to um, a component. So here we're actually visually kind of interacting with it and putting exactly what we want on the screen. Uh, so let's go with an about page and a pricing page. So yeah, I was wondering if you could completely create a whole set of components here. Um, let's add a note here. So this is something else we can do is actually tell draw a UI or make real, whatever you want to call this um, app, that certain things about it. So let's say here, uh, 
Um, so let's grab the whole thing there again and click make real. So as I said, there the user login logout drop downs kind of difficult to do with a um, with visually, but I've been able to kind of point to it and say what I want. Let's see if it understands. Okay, come on, come on. Okay, cool. Oh, it's even added an avatar there. That's crazy. Okay, so let's put this as a separate file, say. And if I hit that, And we've actually got a drop down there as well, which is, I think is in, incredible really. It's not going away when we click off of it. And this is a bit kind of mad centering if we inspect that and have a look at what's going on. It hasn't actually kind of vertically aligned it, but then we could iterate on that and kind of point on it. Um, that's probably down to my bad drawing, to be honest. I'm gonna try one more thing and then uh, end it for this video. But the last one I wanted to try was something that allowed us to do pricing options. So let's draw some pricing options. So basic, add some features, feature one, Feature two and feature three. So let's go with this like three tier pricing page that you have. So, and then I'll just add a couple of others because we're able to duplicate this. And then I'll just make some other ones. You can take that all of that. Pricing options. So the, bear in mind, this is completely free and you are able to just use your own API key here. If you don't want to, it is an open source project. So that's something I should have said first of all, but basically it's open source. You can download it and add it, um, add your own API key locally so that you don't have to worry about if whether or not they're doing anything with your API key. It's cleared every time you use it, but yeah. Uh, let's see if it will add a switch for us as well for monthly and annual pricing. Make this just a tiny switch here so it's obvious what's going on. Okay, so da -da -da, let's grab that. Make real. Bit Captain Picard there. Make it so. Let's see if it understands all that. It's a quite a complex uh, component compared to the other ones that I've done there. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, so let's copy this and put it in the pricing page. Wow. That is fairly impressive. So I'm guessing that there isn't. So we've got replacement of classes going on there in JavaScript. What I really like is that this is actually just chucking out HTML and we don't need to do anything else fancy. It's literally giving us that straight off the bat. We can see what's going on under the hood because it is open source. Um, this is the original repo, which is a draw a UI repo. If we come over to this, which is the draw UI TL draw version that they've taken. We can see the full system prompt that's going in there. So you're an expert web developer, you specialize in Tailwind. User will give you a load fidelity wireframe. You return a single HTML file that uses Tailwind and JavaScript to create a high fidelity website. And then we've got some other ones. We, oh, in fact, our notes could be provided in blue or red text arrows or drawings. Okay, there you go. Okay, yeah, so, I mean, this is 
really impressive. Like this is something you can go and use straight away now and it's completely um, open source. You can download it, put it on your machine or you can go and visit the Draw My UI website. Go and check it out. Let me know how you get on and I will speak to you soon in a new video. All right, bye for now. Bye.